I hope that by you clicking on this video, you will find the answers to any questions you might have about Sophronites coccinia, whether you can grow this beautiful little miniature in your environment in an unconventional setup, if by chance you don't have the humidity that it requires, which is anything above 70%. Welcome. I hope that with this care collab together with Patricia's orchids, we can answer some questions you may have and help you in deciding how you would like to grow your orchid. I am here in Southern Spain and my humidity levels are next to non-existent. For that reason, I have potted up my Sophronitis coccinia and it used to be mounted because I find mounted orchids to be very, very beautiful and attractive to a certain degree until they start to suffer. And you can see signs of stress on this orchid on the older leaves and that is the lack of the humidity, that I couldn't keep up with the watering as the orchid started to grow new growths. It needed more care, more demanding on the waterfront and the humidity requirements. And I couldn't provide that as it grew on the mount. I've had this orchid almost two and a half years, and as it was a little one, there's two pieces in here, but as it was little, it was quite fine on that mount. And I had it with sphagnum moss and I was spraying and spraying and spraying to keep it as wet as possible during my very, very hot summers with extremely dry, hot winds. And then as it grew, you can see it's started to show signs of stress. The leaves are dehydrated and the leaf tips, mind you, on the older bulbs were drying and, but still, for the amount of care I was giving it and the amount of humidity I was giving it as best as I could, it wasn't enough as it started to push out new growths, which was taking a lot of energy in order to get them to grow. And my mounted option wasn't feasible anymore. So Patricia's orchids, her care video will be in the description below. If this kind of a setup doesn't quite meet your expectations or you think, nah, let me see what Patricia has to say about how she cares for it. I'll leave the link in the description. So because of the fact that this orchid's needs, I couldn't meet her requirement anymore as she was growing bigger, I decided to pot her up in Ceramis in a semi-hydro setup as she started to grow new roots late, late last summer. I'm so happy to say that I did get her to bloom in 2019 and those blooms are spectacular i mean i like myself to have big blousey cattleyas i love them to bits beautiful you know 20 centimeter blooms what's not to like when you get a little miniature like this and the blooms are actually almost double the size of the leaf that is quite spectacular in itself and that bright, bright, iridescent red. It's astounding. It's like having a Masdevallia ignea in your collection, but you can't grow Masdevallias. It's that kind of a color. But the reason I potted her up, yeah, into uh, Ceramis and Semi-Hydro was in order to hopefully make her happy in my environment long-term. And you can see that I have quite a number of growths coming. Again, mine, there's two pieces here, but they are growing pretty, pretty well now. I still am not happy that she is not pot bound, but considering that when I repotted her, she was just sort of like throwing out a set of roots that were untimely. They're not seasonal for this poxinia. Normally the roots come after blooming. And in my case, they didn't come after blooming, but much later than once the blooming had finished. So I couldn't react as quickly as I wanted to. So she is not pot bound, but with all these new growths here, I got two on this piece and three on the smallest piece. You can see there, one, two, three. I believe that I will be okay with regards to at least getting one set of roots going in this environment with the ceramics. I need her to be happy with a little bit more of a water retentive material as opposed to sphagnum moss. Because I have to water so often, my sphagnum moss gets very green and gross looking on the outside very quickly. And I used to re-moss that inorganic mount two times a year. Whether I had to disturb roots or not, 
the moss was breaking down quickly because of how wet I was keeping this orchid. And I don't trust green sphagnum moss, even if underneath it's still somewhat fresh. When the roots come out, I just don't trust the green part of the sphagnum moss. And then I also would have to re-moss during the summer, the heat of the summer, when she is actually just finished blooming and not pushing out roots. And there's always a risk to be messing around with the mount. I wanted a more permanent setup where I can just leave her alone, whether she's growing roots, blooming or new growths. I didn't want to keep touching her two times a year. Now the downside with this wet environment here, and you can see by the state of the orchid, how she is not absorbing anything and so wobbly, even after all these months, there is no nutrient uptake at all. The ceramus is black and that is algae as well. I had a layer of sand on top to increase the humidity as opposed to using more sphagnum moss. I put just regular sand and that sand was a, it was a little bit too wet with the ceramus and it created another slimy layer, which I didn't appreciate. So with tweezers, I started to take off all the sand the shallowness of this pot is giving me more humidity than I had actually expected with the ceramics in there. So that's working out really well. I've got the environment. I'm hoping I can maintain her happy. I submerge her in a bowl of water because the ceramics is so highly retentive and let her soak up through these holes and from the bottom up, water her instead of flushing her. Very, very cautious with this orchid at this point in time. Despite the fact that she looks vigorous, she is by no means settled and secure in that pot. I have confidence that she will be. And again, those updates are going to be interesting. But right now, we are in mid-February and these are, are looking good. I'm liking the fact that the growths are still progressing. I'm, liking, I'm not liking the fact that the energy of the remaining tiny little pseudobulbs is being depleted but I believe that she has enough strength and she will push through, especially now that I've got the growths actually coming out and touching and going up. I have her right now located indoors, right under the beam of blurple lights because I need these growths to come up. I don't want them to be this crawling habit and that's something that she can do when she's on a mount and that's safe, but not in a pot. So I'm training these growths to go up so that the roots go down instead of trying to fandangle their way over and across the rhizome. That is the plan. In the previous years, she was growing outside all year round. She tolerated my hot summers really, really well. Despite the fact that she's a cool to intermediate grower, she really did well in my summers. But again, I was so heavy on the watering in order to achieve that. Once she's established in this setup and in this pot again, I'm going to leave her outside in the same shelf with my Rapiculus lelias because her growth habit reminds me of Rapiculus lelias and that's why I went for this rock lithophyte setup. If she's not throwing roots by the time the temperatures get much, much warmer, I will maintain her inside until such a time that she is best established. Coming from Brazil, I mean, she, she grows from 850 meters all the way up to 1,600 meters, something like that. And she can, her temperatures can drop pretty radically. I mean, my temperatures in the winters when I received her were down to five degrees Celsius. This is the first winter that she's with me that she's been inside simply because I'm babying her a little bit in order to get established. But she who lived with me outside the first winter that she arrived actually made sure to buy her in the autumn of 2018 so that the acclimating process to my environment is a little bit easier on her as we were heading into cooler temperatures as opposed to getting her in spring and then slamming her with hot temperatures all the way through summer while I'm trying to acclimate her. So if you are contemplating getting this orchid, I would also highly consider that you consider the time of year you're gonna buy her and hopefully that there is no difference in the hemisphere that she's still struggling with the acclimating process based on the hemisphere she's coming from and where you are now and also the time of year that you're buying her as she is a cool to intermediate grower i would highly recommend to buy in the fall where temperatures are dropping 
Of course, my conditions, I'm able to grow outside. If you can provide steady temperatures indoors, then the transition isn't as drastic as it would be if I received her in spring and then blasted her with a hot summer. But I do have to say that this little orchid is more vigorous than I gave it credit for. And I'm really pleased, despite the fact that she's looking a little bit weak and a little bit depleted, I am really, really pleased to see that none of the growths are failing. At this point in time, I'm actually not even fertilizing her. I may forfeit blooms for this coming year of 21 while I'm getting her established in the pot but I don't want to be fertilizing her at a point where I don't see that any roots are in there that are able to take up any kind of nutrients. So I'm not even foliar feeding her. This is really, really a touch and go situation for me to this date still. And that is why I do submerge her in a bowl so that she can take water in through the holes and then the wicking process does the work for me. So I am really pleased that these growths haven't aborted, considering that they're not getting any nutrients at this point in time. And I will continue to just water her with plain RO water. I do give a touch of seaweed sometimes, that's 40 parts per million, but there's no rhyme or reason at this point. It's just, that is what I have in my bucket on the day. And if it's her turn to get a soak, then, you know, at that point she gets seaweed but I can't see if the roots that I saw growing later in last year, and that's the reason I did make the transition into this setup because of those growing roots. I can't see if they've had any effect at all, if they've progressed, if they've gone into the pot or not. These roots were dry from Jump Street, so that's not an indicator in my books. I'm just really happy that at this point, I have several growths on the go, none have been aborted. So we're still in the early stages of seeing if this setup is a success. Personally, I would say I don't see an issue that long-term it will be a success. It's just the transition now, that's a little bit of a touch and go moment. Having said that, if I lose her, I would be very, very upset. But I would have lost her if I had left her on the mount as well. It was a question of damned if you do and damned if you don't in my case. I think we're heading in the right direction. I think I can, I can see that there is potential, this is gonna be okay. The question is how long is it still going to take? I love this little orchid. I love the fact that the blooms that give me the feeling like I've got a Masdevallia Ignea in my collection and they are so long lasting. If there's only one bloom per growth, it really doesn't matter because if you have two blooms, they last us from six to eight weeks. It's pretty amazing. They are not fragrant, however. They are not fragrant, but they do last an incredible long time considering the size of the orchid and the size of the bloom in comparison to the orchid. They're just fascinating, very, very beautiful. And I've also had no pest issues with this one. Touch wood, I've had no pest issues, not ever, not mealybugs, not scale, none of, none of that. And I hope that that in combination with my new attempt of getting her established in a pot will be her strong factor in order to pull her through. If you're still in doubt and if I didn't cover the reasons behind I'm, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, to have answered all the questions, then of course please feel free to leave your questions in the comments below and go and check out Patricia Orchid's video. Perhaps there's a setup there that'll answer more questions or give you a little bit more of a better feel for what you can do if you're considering buying this orchid or, for example, if you have one. I hope that we in this Care Collab can be of help. Should you have this orchid and you make videos and post them on YouTube or elsewhere, why don't you consider joining us on future updates? My email is in the description below. Why don't you drop me a line? and I'll put you in on the, onto the spreadsheet and then for any future updates, you will be notified and we can coordinate a date, etc. and uh, add as many videos of this gorgeous little orchid into the Care Collab series. Thank you everybody who watched this video, who stuck with it to the end. I really appreciate your time. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day and please stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.